Welcome to the Pinkness channel and I've had it, I'm done. This video is obviously about Ethan Klein and Trisha Paytas v. David Dobrik. For the most part, I'm only gonna be covering everything that led up to the insider article that covered the Dirty Dom situation. So if you don't hear me talk about it, that's why. I'm gonna loop back to it at the end of the video. Also, I know what you're thinking. Pinkamus, you dumb homunculus. This drama is months old and frankly, no one cares about it anymore. I know, I know. This video was meant to come out during the heat of it all, but you know what? This spring semester, I took six classes and it, ate up all of my time. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. I still remember back in 2017 when my friends Jordan and Jason got me into H3H3 H3 Productions. We all loved him. Ethan Klein was one of the top commentators. He was right up there with Leafy and iDubs. But now in 2021, he is total scum. You know, I can accept stop making commentary videos in order to focus on the H3 podcast. I can even accept the subpar interviewing skills that you put on the show, but the final nail in the coffin for me, I'm sorry, when Ethan Klein said this in a podcast. What breed of dog is Scooby-Doo? What the hell? Scooby-Doo looking at, he doesn't look like anything. He's just like some cartoon, bro. Nobody, and I mean nobody, steps on the Great Dane's tongue. <laughs> Now, before we can get into all of the David Dobrik controversies, we must first talk about a brief history of the Frenemies podcast. A couple years back, Ethan made a video on Trisha calling her out on the photoshopped pictures that she would post on social media and would basically just body shame her. Cut to last year where she actually appears on the H3 podcast. Ethan and Hila interview her. Trisha says some wild things, as she does. The oh. Jews killed Jesus? That's not, that's, that's like that's, propaganda. That's all that exists. The Romans at the time. killed, uh, the Roman government killed Jesus. I, okay, well, I like to, I, anyway. You like to think the Jews did. <laughs> I understand. Ultimately, they squash the beef they had. Trisha comes back onto the podcast because Ethan wants to do his version of the Bachelorette with her. She agrees at first, but after looking at all the bachelors that were picked, she refuses to do it anymore. In fact, Trisha feels like she has been wronged by Ethan. And Hila, and that's when Hila's brother Moses enters the picture. Moses reaches out to Trisha to flirt with her without Ethan and Hila knowing. So Trisha smiled like the Grinch because she realizes the perfect way to get back at Ethan and Hila is to fuck Moses. She puts this plan into effect, but what she didn't count for is that she would actually start to fall for Moses. Aww. I love Mo from here, Trisha and Moses become serious and enter a very loving relationship with each other. Ethan and Hila don't like this at first, but soon realize that, you know what, maybe they are good for each other. Now keep in mind, at this time, Ethan was in the midst of war with Keemstar. Ethan could drop a content nuke, Keem would reply, they went back and forth and it put the internet in an awkward position. I only really bring up this specific situation because I've noticed that Ethan uses similar tactics and patterns from this situation when he goes up against David Dobrik. But after the Ethan v Keem war ended, it actually backfired quite a lot. Ethan's goal was to destroy Keemstar's career and get everybody on his side. But he was only able to take Keem's sponsor away from him. But to make it worse for him, this situation resulted with Ethan losing about seven or eight sponsorships from the H3 podcast. This wasn't good. He dug himself into a deep hole. Not to mention the H3 podcast was on the decline in 2020. They would be lucky if a podcast hit a million views. And it's not like it was from a lack of guests, people were either fed up with Ethan or just stopped caring about the show overall. How do you have people like Danny Gonzalez, Eric Andre, Logic on your show, and all those episodes do so poorly? Sorry, this is one of the best performing YouTuber podcasts. Really? This? Now you'd think he'd learn his lesson and not go after people's sponsors, but unfortunately, he doesn't. To compensate for the loss of his sponsors, Ethan does two things here. One, he turns to his audience and begs them to become channel members to support the podcast. I know I know people are upset that we're making content behind a paywall, but you really just have to understand that like we're in a situation when we've lost a lot of our sponsors and we really need to um, just create a stable a, a stable baseline for which we can make uh, continue to make our content and expand the podcast and buy stuff like the Gatsby. And for those who don't know what channel members are, it's a lot like Patreon. You pay at least $5 a month and you can get access to badges and exclusive live streams. And two, Ethan starts multiple podcasts on the channel. Because if you're a successful channel that uploads multiple videos a week that are hours long, you'll really rack up the ad revenue. Alongside the main H3 podcast, they launched H3 After Dark, a bonus show of sorts, 
content court where they take a certain famous person a la content cop style but in a courtroom setting and finally frenemies a podcast hosted by ethan klein and trisha paytas that's right since trisha was dating moses and ethan found himself spending more and more time with her he realized that their conversations are so absurd that he needs to monetize them pronto thus the frenemies podcast was born. I'm gonna be honest, I was a fan of the Frenemies podcast for the first few months. It was really a guilty pleasure. Now I understand why people watch stuff like Keeping Up with the Kardashians and The Bachelor. It's any reality show, really. It was fun watching Ethan and Trisha take jabs at each other and continuously twisting a knife, putting each other down. You know, back when the name of the show actually meant something. From week to week, you never know if the next episode they were going to get along or fight the whole time or a mixture of both, really. But everyone quickly realized that the atmosphere of the show was not good for Trisha's mental health. You just hate me so much. I, I do, and I do, and like, I know, yeah, whatever. There is, because I just, I, I hate people just like, that are you. You're the person I hate in this world. Really? That's so just offensive, And but they do nothing wrong, and when people are provoked, oh, they're crazy, calling girls crazy and stuff like that, it's like, it, but taking no accountability, no responsibility, you think everything's just an attack against you, everyone's against Ethan, like, oh my gosh, I'm always right, I'm the, it's like, ugh, you and Jax don't serve each other, so. Jax? Well, I can't believe you're going after Jax, he's such a sweet guy. <laughs> Love you. All right, Trisha. All right, bye. Thanks for the great episode. She always making comments about the family and how. I wasn't. That wasn't it. I said, oh, Ela should be a guest why... on the podcast. And you're like, don't fucking mention Ela. She's the one I'm talking about. Oh, a fucking queen. You guys can talk about my shit all the time. It's... But her, don't fucking mention her name. Dumb fucking bitch. Okay. I think we should end it, honestly. Yeah, I think so, too. Such a fucking bitch. She's not. And you are too. And you're a fucking cuck. You, you have no fucking a cock. backbone. All right. You should leave. We'll talk later. Mm. Yeah, you should get out. I'm not, I am going, but yeah. I'm not talking later. Fucking, <laughs> fucking bitch, you too. It always struck me as very odd that Ethan posted the two big mental meltdowns that Trisha had on front of me. And before any of the H3 fanboys jump into my throat commenting, Oh, uh, do you do realize that Trisha gave extensive permission to Ethan to upload those episodes? To that I say, suck my dick. Let me give a personal example. I film videos with my best friend Camilo. You've seen him in past videos, we've been working together for years. If someday he and I were to shoot a video and it ended with him seriously injuring himself or he mentally broke down at the end of it and later on he gave me permission that I was okay to upload it, do you really think that I would do that? Let me answer that for you, fuck no. And you know why? It's because I have something that Ethan lacks and it's a little word called morals. To be fair, a lot of YouTubers don't have morals. To put it bluntly, morals do not equal success. That's a conversation for a different day, but the point is that Ethan is no exception to that. In this hypothetical I created, I don't care that Camilo said it was okay to post it. I am not comfortable with that. Also, we don't know if this is going to be something that he's going to find traumatic in the long run. He could end up regretting it and hating to see that it's online. Thus, driving a wedge in our friendship and... I'm just not gonna risk that. So, I don't care that Trisha gave permission. Ethan, do you really think that she looks back on episodes 5 and 13 fondly? I bet she doesn't. You should know that stuff like this is not only bad to post for the public, but to monetize it on top of that, it's just, that's just scummy, like, ugh. But, he sees no issue in that. I mean, it's just like Mr. Krabs once said, money, money, money. Honey. Now in this point in the frenemy storyline, this clearly wasn't working. Sure, Trisha kept coming back, but if it kept up like that, it was gonna get to the point where she would never want to see Ethan or the H3 crew ever again. Not to mention, shortly after this, Trisha and Moses get engaged. Now that it looks like Trisha is truly becoming part of the family, Ethan knew that they could no longer claw into each other like they used to. It wouldn't be good for anybody. This is where frenemies changed. Instead of tearing each other apart, this is where Ethan and Trisha team up to take down other YouTubers for a change. One could make the argument that wasn't fully their intention for the show moving forward, but that's literally what happened next. Enter David Dobrik. Finally, the main subject for the video. I gave so much backstory that I probably shouldn't have, but oh well. Now I'll be honest. 
I've been a pretty big fan of David Dobrik, just so you all know of my biases. But to be fair, it's like I said in the beginning, I was also a fan of H3 for a long time too. It's not an exaggeration when I say that I have listened to at least 80% of the H3 podcast catalog. So I'm caught in the middle here. I want to use this video to talk about the sins of Ethan and Trisha. I could make another video going after David, but I feel like there are so many videos going after him and not enough videos about what Ethan and Trisha get wrong and just all of their bad doings throughout this situation. So here we are. Now that I've given as much backstory as I possibly could, the rest of this video will be me picking my prime examples of the big no-nos that Ethan and Trisha have done that I don't like. Wah. That was my Wario impression. Did you like it? Was it better than Elon Musk's? Be honest, I know it was. I know it was. Forgive me if I'm all over the place in this video. There's just truly so much to cover. You know what? I feel like Iron Man when he had to fight Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Remember that shit? I hope those two don't have any tricks up their sleeves. Now the David Dobrik vendetta started to win... Oh, again? Are you serious? Let's go! Can John Walker do that? Hmm? Can John Walker do that? H3 started covering David because Trisha was a member of the vlog squad for a year and she has a vendetta against David in the group. Ethan and Trisha are exposing people like David Dobrik, James Charles, Jake Paul, and plenty of others. Not because it's morally the right thing to do. Please. It's to get revenge on these creators. It's to settle a score because they feel like they've been wronged. Also, Ethan and Trisha teaming up like this makes for a deadly combination. Even Ethan has admitted that Trisha is a bad influence on them. My problem is that you're getting me into so much trouble <gasps> with people. Oh yeah, yeah, people like-, like just over the weekend, I first of all, I tweeted, fuck Jeffree Star. First of all, maybe it's you getting yourself into trouble. I it is, I, it <laughs> is, but like, you're a bad influence on me. Cause I'm a shit talker by Maybe nature. Oh, yeah, so you're and now you're gi giving me all these new people to hate <laughs> on. The big problem is that Ethan and Trisha make a lot of points that are just plain hypocritical. And I know the big meme with Ethan is to call him a hypocrite, but it truly is astounding how much he does it. This man is the literal human embodiment of contradiction. For example, he's pretty big on going after people's sponsors. Even though last year in his battle with Keemstar, he very specifically said, I wouldn't go after people's sponsors, me, little old me, no way. Let me address this head on. I am not someone that supports going after somebody's sponsors to try to cancel them for something bad. <laughs> G Fuel is as much a part of Keemstar's identity as his beard. Also a big criticism that Ethan has on David Dobrik is that David bullies members of the vlog squad. You shouldn't bully people underneath you. There's a power dynamic there, you see? Oh, really? You shouldn't bully people in your content, yeah? May I present the jury this clip from episode 178 of the H3 podcast. Keep in mind that this aired literally a year ago. I'm just, I'm trying to include you in the show and I don't know if you're doing shtick or if you're trying to engage in a serious conversation. He's banging with me. a little trolley. And I don't appreciate it. That's the best place to be. <laughs> what am I doing? What am I, why do you even talk to him? Like, I try to talk to him. I try to include him in the show. I like, I'm trying to make the show interesting. I'm trying to enrich the dynamic. But Ian refuses to engage. Like, after all I've done for him, I gave him purpose. I gave him a job. I gave him a girlfriend, a love life, everything. I built him up to the man he is today. And I don't know what I do to deserve this disrespect. What do you have to say about that? I'm not joke. I'm not joking. Mm. I think I offer a good balance. I think I'm, I'm differentiating from the two... Uh, Comedians next to me over here. We're offering a good turn off his mic. Palette. <laughs> this guy. I want a genuine Me. conversation. I'm not looking for shtick. I do the shtick. You do. You answer the questions I ask you. That's how this works. Right, Ela? That's right. Thank you. So 
Somebody backs me up finally. I mean... All right, let's move on, because Ian's putting everyone yeah. to sleep. We talk about everything. For context, Ian had been feeling ill the past couple of days, so Ethan was genuinely curious about how Ian was doing, but Ian would respond in a way that wasn't taking anything seriously. This upsets Ethan, and he goes on this whole tirade for over 10 minutes. I mean, look at the dislikes. It's one of the most disliked episodes of the podcast. Not only did everybody hated seeing Ethan bully Ian, but even Ian's mother called him and asked him what was going on. Ian said his mom called him and was like, what did your mom say, Ian? Well, she just thought I was like about to die from illness. Oh. <laughs> but, she, you know, she feels a little uncomfortable sometimes, I suppose. Why does your boss talk to you and bully you like that in front of millions? Gee, I don't know, Mom. He's kind of a hypocrite. Click. Hangs up. <laughs> Just after that. Ethan was getting so much hate that he had to start off the next episode with a big apology. I'm not gonna lie, I feel very stupid and humiliated and bad. Um, for those that didn't uh, notice or look in the comments or anything, um, people were upset with how I was treating Ian. So for all of the H3 fanboys out there ready to defend this saying, oh, Ethan was just joking. He loves Ian for Pete's sake. Okay, so why is it when David bullies his friends in his vlogs, it's bad, but when Ethan bullies his employees, it's fine. I mean, David loves his friends just like Ethan loves his employees. I mean, do you understand where I'm coming from with this? Hmm? And to be honest with you, that's not even the worst example I have on Ethan. In fact, what we're about to talk about happened during the David Dobrik situation. After a few episodes of Ethan and Trisha going in on David, there was one H3 employee that this didn't sit right with. And that is Starkiller, aka AB. AB had been a fan of David, and he noticed that Ethan and Trisha are painting him to be the worst person to have ever have lived. AB was aware of all the good stuff that David has done throughout his career, so to not mention any of that felt dishonest to him. Like I said, in my mind, I was thinking that I'm trying to give another perspective. Um, and I, again, I wasn't even saying that I stand behind all those things. Maybe I should have phrased it as, well, someone would argue this, but... But of course, as soon as AB expressed this opinion, not only did Trisha attack him, but the H3 audience did as well. And what did Ethan do during this? One of these. Just sat back and let it happen. I was stupid to think I could defend David without offending you. Trisha, I fully support you and I'm sorry for being insensitive. I know it may take time, but I will do everything in my power to show you that I will want nothing but good for you. I'm sorry I let run down. I will do better. Excuse my shaky voice, but I'm being sincere. Now to be fair, when they had that argument on the podcast, AB should have gone in there way more prepared. He should have done way more research, but it was pretty clear that he hadn't. But because of that episode, AB was horribly harassed and it took a mental toll on the kid. The amount of nasty uh, comments and hate I've been getting across all my social media is insane. I've been told multiple times to kill myself and that I should be fired. I may deserve the backlash, but deserve it or not, I'm still human and it hurts. That's very apparent in the next episode. I mean, if you just look at him, he looks so destroyed for crying out loud. I mean, how does that make you feel about David as someone who's defending him, maybe? Because I feel like he kind of playing the fool on his audience. Right. Yeah, no, it's... I think A.B. said Yeah, I'm sorry, A.B. Now, at this point, Ethan does feel some remorse, but... He should have never let this happen to begin with. You're the boss. You have an obligation to protect your employees. They didn't sign up for shit like that to happen to them. God forbid AB has a differing opinion from everybody. That's why I find it so funny when Ethan calls David and the vlog squad a cult. Because if they're a cult, then the H3 fan base is most certainly a cult as well. But what happened was, um, AB went against the family. <laughs> I've also noticed whenever someone has a different opinion from Ethan, he'll focus on it and try his best to convince them to agree with him. And he just won't let it go. He'll go on and on about it for over half an hour. He's like that in the Ian episode I talked about earlier. He's like this with AB. He was even like this during the episodes where Trisha had her mental breakdown. Ethan will continuously poke the bear and truly can't stop himself from doing it. But to get back to AB, I'm sincerely shocked that he's still part of the H3 crew. The guy received fucking death threats. For what? 
If I were him, I would have quit after going through that abuse. It's hilarious that Ethan calls out David for not knowing what Big Nick was going through and for not telling the group, hey, don't go so hard on Nick, when Ethan literally did the same thing in this situation with AB. Hello? I mean, this, this is just insane. It, it, it's just crazy. Since I brought up Big Nick, let's talk about him for a second. Now, Big Nick reached out to Ethan in order to get interviewed about his time in the vlog squad. Now, what we're about to talk about is a point that Scotty Sire tried to make in his video responding to Ethan and Seth Francois, but he failed at making it. And I know that Seth and Big Nick have both been on H3's podcast, and you are part of the reason that these lies have snowballed and gotten so big, because you are, you're spreading the lies without any sort of verification. In fact, when they were talking, I watched you, Ethan, take what they said and say, oh, that's so fucked up. So they did this. You like you would take their words and you would make it sound even worse than what they said. Yeah, Scott's not the best at articulating, so maybe I can do a better job of telling you what he meant to say. During this interview, Ethan would purposely ask leading questions to Big Nick. A good interviewer asks neutral questions, but you didn't want to be neutral. Ethan is on this train to make David look as bad as possible, so of course he's going to ask any questions that'll do just that. He only wants to hear the bad stuff about David to further push his narrative. To be honest, what Big Nick was saying already didn't make David look good, but Ethan just had to push it even further. You can tell because at one point Ethan says, oh, you're just being nice, sweetheart. Man, I can't Feel get over bad. It's it a tough situation. so toxic in there. It's crazy. He's trying so hard to be nice too, but I can understand. Yeah, that. he, he doesn't, doesn't want to start yet. Yeah. No, the reality is, is that Big Nick is just more mature than you, Ethan. Don't put fucking words in his mouth. That's really what Scott was trying to say in his video. And since Scott tried to derail Ethan's narrative, Ethan would just rule out anything Scott said completely. You know what I just realized? I haven't talked nearly enough about Trisha in this video, so you know what? Why don't we switch gears on over to her? Oh, Trisha Paytas. The girl who pops into all these different YouTube groups, whether it be to Shane Dawson, to the Vlog Squad, to Kian and JC, to the H3 podcast. None of us can escape her. She's everywhere. Now, she's the one who started all of this. Trisha has a vendetta against David and the Vlog Squad for the past couple of years now. She has made many, many videos on them and has been patiently waiting for their downfall. Why is this? Well, in 2018, she dated Vlog Squad member Jason Nash. They were in love, she became a member of the Vlog Squad, and she would appear in almost every David vlog. She's very entertaining. No doubt about that. Now, for those of you who didn't watch Trisha and Jason's relationship play out like I did, it's important to note that they had one of the most toxic relationships that YouTube has ever seen. I wish that was an exaggeration, but it really isn't. They were constantly arguing. They would purposely say things to insult each other, and no one should ever inspire to have a relationship like theirs. During the run of the Front of His podcast, she has painted this picture that she was the victim in the relationship, that Jason did everything wrong and that Trisha did everything right. And I'm not gonna pretend like I was there during their relationship, but if you do enough digging, you can find all of the contradictions. I found this video from a huh, T channel that did all the legwork for this one. Let me show you a few clips so that my point can get across. And when someone says I'm uncomfortable, no matter what their past behaviors are or patterns or whatever you think you know, when someone says I'm uncomfortable, stop that shit. Cut that shit. Apologize, own up, and grow from that shit. Don't be excusing this behavior. That's fucking disgusting. Jason almost called 911 on you. Yeah. Why? What were you doing? Uh, nothing. Like, literally. <laughs> Shut up. I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> David, it was... It was so scary. Wait, why did you almost call the police? She sat here like a prison guard. <laughs> and I was like, Trisha, get out of the way. I'm going home. I want to go home. I need some time to myself. She's like, no, no. Holy sh and I was Is like, this true? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you're not leaving. She I go, I'm calling 911. She goes, good, do it. Well, I hate when people keep me hostage in their apartment when I'd like to leave. If there's enough people saying like, hey, you hurt me, this hurt me, 
And it got to the point where Big Nick said he was suicidal. I'm not trying to speak on his behalf, but that's what he said on the A Street podcast. To the point where I'm like in a mental hospital and like we're friends for a year and a half. He was my whole world and my whole life and he made me feel loved and that I was worthy and I forgot about all the pains of my past relationships and all the pains of my childhood and all the things I felt. And he fixed that. But now that this was gone, that's the problem. Once something's gone that you are so heavily dependent on, you're going to crumble and crack. And that's what happened to me. And it's no fault of his whatsoever. I never put the blame on him. It's me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jason Nash, total monster. Trisha Paytas, simply an angel. To be clear, I'm not saying all this to defend Jason. He clearly did a bunch of shit wrong in that relationship. I just don't like it when I see Trisha go on frenemies and rewrite history. By the way, this is going to sound like this is coming out of nowhere, but Trisha did physically abuse Moses. The evidence is out there. I believe they talked about it in the seventh episode of the Frenemies podcast. Could be wrong. Somewhere around there. It was really, really personal. That, and that, it's like, it's really no, damaging that was to this public. day in our relationship. That it was, was not public. Yes, it was. Moses Everybody was said it literally. It was not public. It Which, was what not are you guys public. talking about specifically? You, the, the, the arm thing. How did people get photos of it? I didn't put After that out. After you said it on the podcast, that account was like, now that it's out on the podcast, I'm going to post these photos. My boyfriend got catfished by someone, said something about an altercation we had that nobody knew. Ethan brought it up on the podcast that makes me look like I'm a domestic abuse, like I'm a, I'm a person that hits my partner. And oh. like that was no. out in the open. And we even said, Moses, like, stop, cut it. We're like, don't put that in the thing. What does he do? He puts it in the fucking thing. Wait, it was never pri It was never fucking public. Well, maybe you shouldn't hit him. I agree, but that is something that is so fucking personal that like you said, and we're like, please edit it out. It was a fucking weak moment, and our relationship will never get past that, and I even tell him that. Now everyone thinks I'm a fucking, per like, a man-beater and shit like that because of so you. Hold on. So, and hold it's on. so I simply must ask, I mean, how many of these exes have you done this to, Trisha? I know that you are a victim of abuse, but it's just odd to me that you're also an abuser. But that's just me. Also, while watching the Frenemies podcast, I did come up with this theory that during her time in the vlog squad and dating Jason, she hatched this failsafe to ruin the vlog squad if need be. That it's no surprise that she would attack David and the group post breakup because it was super premeditated. So why do I think this? Oh, it's because I remember seeing a David vlog a few years ago where she does indeed threaten him. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, for this video, I watched hundreds of David's vlogs in order to find this clip. In fact, I watched all of his vlogs from 2018 before he took them all down. He even saved some too. Ooh. And yet, I still couldn't find this clip. I was going crazy. It felt like I was making it up or something until... I went on Reddit. I wasn't even planning on finding it there. I was just one night scrolling the David Dobrik subreddit, and after scrolling for a bit, there it was. Some beautiful Redditor posted the exact clip I was searching all this time for. I mean, I was jumping up and down with glee. The search was over. So, shout out to you slash Dr. X100. You are the best Redditor ever, and I don't say that lightly. I say it very heavily, in fact. You know, in fact, Hey Siri, remind me tomorrow to send Dr. X100 some Reddit gold. Thank you. All right, let's play the clip. If we ever stop being friends, are you gonna talk crap about David, us? David, I have so much about you. What would you say about me? Oh, I'm not gonna even tell you. If Jason and I break up, you better watch the fuck out. <laughs> oh my god! As long as me and Jason are together, I won't ever. <laughs> Jason, don't mess this up. You see? Do you know what this means? It proves my point. To be more specific, this clearly shows that Trisha doesn't really give a shit about David's wrongdoings. She passes it off nowadays that she calls him out because he's done things that are morally wrong, when in reality, she's just pissed that she and Jason broke up. She blames David for the whole thing and swore to herself that one day that she will do everything in her power to take him down. And it finally worked. I mean, it took some time, but she finally achieved her goal. It's clear that as long as you're Trisha's friend, she'll ignore the bad stuff you do. And if you stop being friends with her, oh, she'll make 10 videos on you. I mean, Shane Dawson was her best friend. And even though he had all these big controversies, she was one of the biggest people to go out there and say, he did nothing wrong. They both enable 
Brandon Calvillo to have dated that 17 year old and they kept him in the vlogs at well after me. They try to make it like you're saying a sitcom and a joke when it was all reality. I get it. Hold people fucking accountable. But Shane has apologized so many times. Shane hasn't made those jokes since I've known him like 2014. You know what I mean? Like it's it, yeah, it's gross. Whatever. There's so many gross jokes like in Family Guy. There's there's literally a pervert on Family Guy. But now that he's wronged her and they're no longer friends, she just turns around and says, oh yeah, he's a bad guy. And he's done a lot of things that are unforgivable. Fuck off. You don't get to just change your opinion whenever it's convenient for you. What are some other bothersome things about Trisha? Hmm. Let me think about that. Well, to name a few, she's admitted to having past where she was a compulsive liar. But my like, like, teachers were like having sex with me and like no one believed me. And I was like, and I think from that, I became like a compulsive liar when I was like younger mm. because I was just like, oh, nobody believes me anyway. So I'll just like lie about everything. So I was like mm. lying about like stupid stuff. She likes to paint anyone as a monster. She does it to Ethan all the time. She steamrolls, not letting other people talk. And she over exaggerates. It may not be lying, but it's hard to tell what's being exaggerated and what's not. Also, don't even get me started about how she automatically writes anyone off that disagrees with her. If you try to bring a different perspective around her, she goes nuclear. She did it with AB, and she even did it to D'Angelo Wallace. Even though D'Angelo said nice things about her in his frenemies video, as soon as he gives her some criticism, she says to simply fuck this guy. Even Big Nick in his interview said that Trisha is pushing her own narrative throughout this and swings 50-50 accuracy to things that she's retelling on frenemies. Trisha describes being there as like kind of toxic. Would you describe it that way? Uh, it is. I think she has her own agenda, but... <laughs> She's not entirely wrong with all the stuff she says, but she's not always accurate. It's like 50-50, mm -hmm. but... On top of that, Trisha's one line that she gives whenever someone tries to give an opinion on her time with David and Jason, she says, oh, you're not allowed to have an opinion because you weren't there. It's such a stupid take because by that logic, then no one on the internet can ever comment on any public situation, ever. I couldn't make commentary videos if that was the case. In fact, Trisha couldn't talk about drama that she's not there for, but she will anyway. <coughs> Sorry. I think it was that vaccine. From here, I mean, do I even have to bring up all the times that Trisha in her past would uh, flirt with underage boys and that one video where she has Trevi Moran on her lap before she transitioned and when she was like 16? Trevor? grind it. <laughs> so I kind of feel like Trevor might. I know, I hate to say it, but you know, the young blood. Oh, hey. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm like, what wait. is your <laughs> underwear? What is oh, my that? God. Hot. Oh. Uh, trees? Watch out, Justin Bieber. Sorry, and you think you can call out sexual assault on social media? I mean, you can, but it, it's just funny hearing it from you of all people. Also, I didn't know where to put this in the video, so let's just talk about it here. I love her last appearance in a David Dobrik vlog. Play it. Trisha Paytas brought so much joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she literally dies. For context, that was for a music video she was shooting at the time, but it's just funny imagining that David set that up to quite literally kill her character off in the vlogs. I mean, that's... Oh, that's beautiful. Let's switch back over to Ethan. Why don't we talk about race for a second? So as someone who has done blackface and has said the N word multiple times, very liberally, as items would put it. I love that I can just say nigger faggot though. Yeah. Like I couldn't, I couldn't right. really say that. Mm -hmm. Do you but feel like? Empowered? Yeah. I feel like you're, you're using a little liberally. Do you really think it's a good idea for you of all people to call out David on racist jokes in the past? I'm sincerely asking. If not, we could also talk about the lack of research you do for your podcasts. Don't get me wrong, there are some times where you are right on the money with what you're talking about, but there are other times where it's just like, how did you not do research on that? Like for example, you claimed early on that David watched your podcast because he had said on the Views podcast that horse semen was the most expensive liquid in the world. But I just have proof, okay, proof that he watches our podcast. <laughs> Horse semen can cost up to four point seven million dollars. Okay, so we had a <laughs> Ben Shapiro uh, uh, impersonator call in, mm -hmm. and he made this joke. Oh, sorry, cat's out of the bag. I don't even know who that is. Okay, well, anyway, he made a joke about how horse semen is the most expensive liquid on the planet. 
poor semen can cost up to $4.7 million. It is actually wow. the most expensive liquid you can buy. What? One Six of the days most expensive later. liquids in the world. This is fucking amazing. Is horse semen? Well, you probably already know about this, Jay. Um, <laughs> I know a lot about semen. <laughs> but a gallon of horse semen can go for four point seven million dollars. Horse semen. Excuse me. Wait, is this like a can cost up to four point seven million dollars? Popular? No, we just wrote that joke. You wrote the joke for the Ben Shapiro impersonator. It wasn't on news or anything. Like you could Google. No. It. Yeah, we wrote the joke. We. I'm not gonna take credit. So it's not even it. real. It's not a real fact. It is a real fact. Okay, but, but he like did it there. six days later. How are you? You can't let this is fact. Someone has said it as a joke on your podcast the week prior, and you had the gall to think that it was so original that anyone who would have said it must have got it from you, right? Well, hate to break it to you, but you are so wrong here. Vice put out an article January 14th of this year talking about the most expensive liquids in the world. Horses being one of them. And the Views episode that David talked about this in was released on February 17th, a month later. If you played the full Views clip on your podcast, David would have clearly said that he read it in the article, but nope. You cut him off right before he could say it. Hmm. Wonder if that was calculated or not. Or, uh, no, what? one of the most expensive liquids in the world. This is fucking amazing. Is horse semen. Well, you probably already know about this, Jay. Um, <laughs> I know a lot about semen. <laughs> but a gallon of horse semen can go for $4.7 million. What are you talking about? Oh, if it comes from the right stud. So, yeah, I was reading an article, and it's like the fi there's a 15-year-old white stallion, and he earns his owners $300,000 every time he shoots a load. This was in the article. <laughs> Is this like a new article like find million that million was popular? No, we just wrote that joke. You wrote the joke for the Ben Shapiro impersonator. It wasn't on news or anything. Like, you could Google no. it. No. Yeah, we wrote the joke. And the H3 episode where the horse semen joke was told was posted on February 11th. So, I can't help but feel like whoever wrote that joke did get it from the article as well and just didn't tell you. See, it's examples like these are why people think you don't do proper research for your show. It actually took 10 seconds to find that article and set the record straight. It's so ridiculous. We've covered so much in this video, but there is one more thing I wanted to talk about before we get to the conclusion. And that is Ethan's love for deplatforming people. He tried very desperately to get Keemstar deplatformed last year, and he celebrated when Leafy actually did get deplatformed. Oh, and by the way, could you remind me what you said in the episode where you talked about this? 210, was it? And that's also part of the thing about when you make 15 videos about someone, even if you're not talking about them in the video, you're just riling people up and getting mm -hmm. them all crazy. And it's like Pokimane has turned into this inhuman monster that people just can just say, I want to kill her. And yeah. that's somehow a funny joke. Huh. Leafy gets banned for making 15 videos on Pokimane. Hmm. That's odd. Considering you made exactly 15 podcasts on David Dobrik. Hmm? Why does Leafy's channel get removed, but yours doesn't? Oh, oh, right, that picture. Oh, yeah, that, okay. I'm sorry to put things together. Hold on, give me a second. Now I know that Leafy said a bunch of terrible things about this on Twitter at the time, and he also sent a bunch of his fans to go harass uh, Pokimane's uh, Discord. Uh, but at the same time, that's all stuff that happened off YouTube, you know? Under your narrative, YouTube would have had to seen these happening on other platforms, but I highly doubt it. I think this really is just a case of harassment because of several videos you make on someone on YouTube. Also, your little grunt, Deaf Noodles, didn't he make at least 25 videos on David? Is that not harassment? I mean, do you all understand now why I think that Ethan's middle name should be legally changed to hypocrite? He calls people out on these certain criticisms that he has either done in the past or will do in the future. Speaking of your 15 podcasts on David, it did wonders for your channel. If you were to sort the H3 podcast channel by most popular, you'll see at the top results some classic episodes and then right out of that, all the David content starts popping up. I mean, just look at that. David, 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 David. I'm seeing at least five up in like the top 
15. There's a reason why I said that the H3 podcast was on the decline in 2020 at the beginning of this video. I wasn't just saying that to be harsh. Last year, your podcast struggled to hit a million views. Nowadays, it's weird if it doesn't get at least 1 million. Not only did Trisha save the H3 podcast, but she also saved Ethan's career overall. She brings in the profits and she's becoming part of the family. That's why Ethan is so loyal to her. Update time. Update time. I've been hard at work uh, procrastinating editing this video, but there's a huge update that I'm going to put at the end here. It would appear that the Frenemies podcast is done. Finito. I love Vista. Baby. So Trisha yet again stormed out of the set because Ethan said something that he shouldn't have, I suppose. And look, she's quit before and what do you know, there's a new episode the following week. But no, this time it looks serious. It looks like there's no going back, at least for the uh, upcoming future. Maybe they'll bring it back in like a month or two, who knows? I mean, they're still gonna be family, so it's not like they're never gonna see each other again. But they're going back and forth, a little bit of a war going on between them. Ethan doesn't want to, but after seeing his video and Trisha's videos, I mean, it's pretty clear to me at least that their friendship was very one-sided and I'm just gonna say a borderline abusive. Ethan put up so much with her. He, he does literally everything for this girl. In fact, he's her number one cheerleader. I mean, he's always like, yeah, new music videos. Yeah, makeup line for Trisha. Yeah. But Trisha just is very critical on him and is always just like, like when they reacted to Vape Nation, she was like, I don't get it. I don't like it. Like literally everything about what Ethan does is like bad, but like, Ethan always uh, puts her on a pedestal. I mean, I don't like either one of them, but I'm feeling uh, pretty bad for Ethan with for everything he's done. Now, of course, Trish is saying that he's lying in his response to everything that's been going on with this. Um, and that's very possible, but frankly, I don't give a shit, dude. Because, as I said, I don't like either one of them, so... She's lying, he's lying, it's very he said, she said, you know, uh, Ethan does show text messages and DMs between them because she had already made stuff like that public, so, I don't know. My point of making this video was that I could see the danger they were as a combination together with this podcast, and I could tell that it wasn't going down a good direction. So that's why I felt like people like me and others need to call them out for all the, uh, shady shit that they were doing, but if the podcast is truly over and it's never coming back, then it's not going to be that much of an issue anymore. Because them separated doesn't do that much, but when they were together on the Frenemies podcast, whew, they made waves, they were they sent people after people that they were very critical on, but if that's not going to continue, then not really that much of a problem anymore. But Obviously, we're going to have to see where things go from here, from there. But for me, I don't care anymore. After this video is done, I'm so done with them. I but yeah, I think Trisha, for the most part, is the true bad guy with them breaking up. And she'll never admit it, though, because she always has to be right. She can never take criticism. It's very abhorrent, abundantly clear. All right, back to the ending of the video. Whew. Now, with all that being said, there is a good side to all of this believe it or not. Because Ethan Klein and Trisha Paytas had obsessed over David Dobrik, Dirty Dom's R-word victim was finally able to talk to Insider and get the justice that she deserves. Or at least I hope she got the justice she deserved. I can't make that call for her, obviously, but it's up to her if she's satisfied with the outcome of this situation or not. Regardless, I don't think Insider would have done the article had Ethan and Trisha not lead the charge on this. By the way, I love that the author of that Insider article said on the H3 podcast, well, you know, we're working on more stories in the Vlog Squad, so we'll see what comes out, but, um, where is it? I, I, I guess there is nothing else, but I don't know. Time will tell. But as for Ethan and Trisha, yes, they get stuff wrong, yes, they over-exaggerate, and yes, they are no angels by any stretch of the imagination. But they truly exposed the sins of the vlog squad, some things that the public had no idea about. And I really do hope that David rights his wrongs with any of the people that he's screwed in the past. Ethan and Trisha actually did a good thing here, but just learn to move on quicker is all. Trisha makes it pretty clear that she will never forgive David, so... By that logic, there really is no need to ever listen to her thoughts on a David thing ever again, because 
no matter what David does in the future, she will always have something negative to say about him. You know, some people forgive and forget, but Trisha's clearly not one of those people. She's already said it all, what feels like a million times already, so I'm ready to not hear it again. Even though they ended up doing a good thing here with David, I can totally see this going down a worse and darker path. If this keeps up, they'll just continuously cancel people over the littlest things. So in conclusion, I am officially done with the H3 podcast and all of its affiliated shows. Yes, I might have to watch some more of it for a future video at some point, but for now, it's no longer a guilty pleasure of mine. No longer interested in the content. I'm done. Goodbye. You can continue to watch their stuff, but just know I won't because I can't take it anymore. I have nightmares, honestly. Now, I may be done with Ethan and Trisha, but I am not done with the David Dobrik situation. You see, a year ago, I made a video critically examining the vlog squad. So I figured it's finally time to make the squeakquel. And this time I'll be covering people who were involved in this situation, more specifically, Big Nick and Seth Francois. I'm sure you noticed I didn't really cover the sexual assault prank they did on Seth, but don't worry, that's definitely gonna come up in the next video. So with all of that being said, subscribe, make sure to watch my previous videos, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Pinkamus, and that's it. Raggy.